Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the program. It's Monday, October 26th. Coming to you live from our studio in Seoul, I'm Kim mo -gyan. Before we get started, these are the stories we're following at the top of the hour. Samsung Group's chairman Lee Gun hee passed away at the age of 78 on Sunday. The late chairman's funeral, which is being held more privately due to COVID-19, will continue until Wednesday. U.S. infectious disease expert Anthony Fauci says the decision on whether a potential COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective will be made by early December. And with just around a week to go until the U.S. presidential elections, President Donald Trump and his Democratic rival Joe Biden are stepping up campaign efforts around the country to lure hearts of voters. Our top story this morning is Samsung Group's chairman Lee Gun hee died at the age of 78 on Sunday after spending six years in hospital since he suffered a heart attack in 2014. A four-day funeral is being held at the Samsung Medical Center in Seoul. For more on this, we connect live to our Pei Eunji, who's at the scene. Eunji, tell us more about the situation there. Mo Gyan, I'm standing in front of the Samsung Medical Center in Seoul, where Samsung Group's chairman Lee Gun hee died on Sunday morning. The hospital's funeral hall is currently packed with reporters, as the presidents of Samsung's affiliates are expected to come to pay their respects starting at 10 a.m. Several politicians also have been expressing their condolences. President Moon's chief of staff, Do Young-min, senior presidential secretary, Lee Ho-sung, and Gyeonggi-do province governor, Lee Jae-myung, visited the hospital and paid their respects yesterday evening. President Moon Jae-in sent a floral tribute and a message of condolence to Lee's family. Lee's death was mourned by the International Olympics Committee as well, as he had been an IOC member for more than a decade. The IOC said Lee had made a great contribution to the Olympic movement and the success of Olympic Games. So, um, Eunji, Samsung has reportedly said it will be a small funeral. Can you give us more details about how the funeral is being held? Lee's body was placed in a coffin about an hour ago at 9 a.m. Samsung said the funeral is being held privately following the wishes of Lee and his family. The funeral is expect expected to be four days long, ending with Lee's burial on Wednesday, as the number of visitors will be limited to fewer than 50 people as a precaution amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Samsung Group has set, set up an online memorial hall via the company's internal system for the employees of Samsung. That's all I have for you at this hour, and I'll be back with, uh, with more updates in a later newscast. Back to you, Bogan. Thank you, Eunji. Do keep us posted. Lee Gun hee helped make South Korea a global leader in high-tech manufacturing. Under his chairmanship, Samsung branched out into many other industries as well and is now worth more than a quarter trillion dollars, as our Kim Yun sing reports. In his three decades as the chairman of Samsung Group, Lee Gun hee grew the company into a global tech giant. When he took over as chairman in 1987, after the death of his father, who founded the company, Samsung's market cap was around 900 billion won. Under Egon, his management, it rose by almost 350 fold to around 282 billion US dollars. Samsung Group's overall turnover accounts for a fifth of South Korea's GDP. Lee Gun hees success as a leader is often attributed to his deep-rooted philosophy of change and innovation. His famous slogan was change everything except for your wife and children. He pushed the company to become the world's biggest memory chip maker in the early 90s, surging ahead of its Japanese and American competitors. By 2012, Samsung Electronics had become number one in the mobile industry as well. While head of Samsung, Lee Gun hee was convicted twice of white-collar crimes like bribery and tax evasion, though he was pardoned both times. The last six years of his life were spent in hospital after he was left incapacitated by a heart attack. He died as the richest man in South Korea. Now, his son Lee jae yong who is a current vice chairman of Samsung Electronics, is widely expected to take over. Kim Yansen, Arirang News. 
And now on the COVID-19 situation here in the nation, South Korea reported 119 new cases on Monday, returning to triple digits for the first time in three days. Of the new cases, 94 were locally transmitted, most of which were in the greater capital area. 25 cases were from overseas. The total number of cases now stands at over 25,500 and no additional deaths have been reported, with the death toll staying at 457. And as Europe continues to see new record highs in daily COVID-19 infections, countries there are in a state of alert as they attempt to stem the rapid spread. Our Lee seung reports. Another day and another day of new daily highs in infection cases in parts of Europe. This includes France, which reported over 52,000 new COVID-19 cases over the past 24 hours alone, after registering over 45,000 a day earlier. France now has over 1.1 million cases since the start of the pandemic. Italy, which has reported over 21,000 cases in the past 24 hours, has imposed at least a month of new measures across the country. This includes shutting down gyms, pools and movie theaters, while putting an early curfew on cafes and restaurants. Despite restaurant and bar owners lobbying against the new measures, the curfew forces stores to close at 6 p.m. In addition, the new measures close ski slopes apart for competitive skiers, and all spectators are banned from stadiums during professional matches. Receptions after religious or civil ceremonies such as weddings are now forbidden. The latest decree is effective starting Monday and will run through November 24th. In Spain, the cabinet on Sunday approved a new national state of alarm aimed at giving the country's regional governments the legal framework needed to limit mobility. Regions will be allowed to restrict the entry and exit from their territories, apart for essential reasons such as going to work or seeing a doctor. It also allows for regions to close their borders should they have a neighboring territory hit hard by the virus. However, the decree does not mean the closure of Spain's borders. It marks the second time the government has issued such a decree, with the latest one less strict than the first in March. Lee seung Arirang News. America's top infectious disease expert has expressed cautious optimism that experts will know by December whether a potential COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective. Our Kim hyo san has the details. U.S. infectious disease expert Anthony Fauci says the decision on whether a potential COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective will be decided by early December, but stressed it would take time to have it widely available. So the amount of doses that will be available in December will not certainly be enough to vaccinate everybody. You'll have to wait several months into 2021. Speaking with the BBC on Sunday, the director of the U.S. National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases added that having a substantial proportion of the population vaccinated could happen sometime during the second or third quarter of 2021. He also explained that healthcare workers will likely to get vaccinated first, as well as individuals who are in the category of being at an increased risk for complications. Asked whether he believes President Trump is correct in saying the U.S. is, quote, rounding the corner in the course of the pandemic, Fauci said it was untrue. The U.S. reported a record of nearly 80,000 new COVID-19 infections for two straight days through Friday and Saturday. The worst outbreaks are being witnessed in the North and Midwest, with some 35 of the 50 states are seeing increases. Kim Hyo-san, Arirang News. With a little over a week until Election Day in the United States, President Donald Trump and his Democratic challenger Joe Biden step up their campaign efforts to seal the deal. Han sung has the details on how the two competitors are battling it out. New Hampshire was U.S. President Donald Trump's latest stop in his re-election campaign. The day before on Saturday, local time, he had visited four states, Florida, North Carolina, Ohio, and Wisconsin, before returning to the White House. He claimed that the nation is turning the corner on COVID-19 and mocked his Democratic challenger, Joe Biden, for rallying in the form of drive-ins. 
But the Trump administration is facing another potential outbreak. The Wall Street Journal reports that at least five people in Vice President Mike Pence's circle, including his chief of staff, Mark Short, have tested positive. A spokesman said Pence himself tested negative and will resume his campaign schedule. Biden spent Saturday in his home state of Pennsylvania, a key battleground, where he slammed Trump for his response to the pandemic. He said that the U.S. death toll of more than 220,000 means Trump does not deserve a second term. Biden had earlier enjoyed support from former U.S. President Barack Obama, who rallied in Florida, also using the drive-in format. With no physical rally scheduled for Sunday, the Democratic presidential nominee is hosting a virtual I Will Vote concert. Meanwhile, running mate Kamala Harris campaigned in Michigan. Han sung Arirang News. Anti-government protesters have gathered again in central Bangkok on Sunday after the prime minister ignored the deadline to step down on Saturday night. The Thai government has called on an emergency session of parliament to ease tensions, but even so, protesters once again plan to take to the streets on Monday. Our Choi min Jung has more. Thousands of anti-government protesters gathered in the main streets of Bangkok on Sunday, a day before the scheduled emergency session of parliament. The rally comes after Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha ignored the deadline imposed by pro-democracy protesters to resign by 10 p.m. Saturday local time. According to Reuters, the Prime Minister's office tweeted on Sunday saying that Prayut will not be quitting. In addition, the government called for a special session of parliament earlier this week to resolve Thailand's crisis and ease political tensions. This comes as protesters have been demanding Prayut's resignation and changes to the constitution since July, amid growing calls to reform the monarchy. In order to soothe the ongoing protests, the prime minister said last week that it is looking to find a middle ground for all sides and provide a fair solution for all by discussing and resolving differences through the parliamentary process. However, another march, this time towards the German embassy, is planned for Monday following a rally which took place at the main shopping district of Racha Prasong the day before. Protesters said in a statement that the planned rally comes as the king spent most of this year in Germany and they seek to find out whether he violated any German laws using his power during his stay. Choi min Dong, Arirang News. Pope Francis has made a surprise announcement naming more than a dozen new cardinals who will assist him and choose his eventual successor. Our Lee kyung reports. Pope Francis addressing pilgrims at St. Peter's Square on Sunday through the window of his studio in the Vatican. He makes a surprise announcement naming 13 new cardinals, high church officials who rank just below the Pope and whose job it is to assist him. On November 28th, on the eve of the first Sunday of Advent, I will hold a consistory for the appointment of 13 new cardinals. They include nine of cardinals under the age of 80 who will be given the role of electing the next pope. 72-year-old Wilton Gregory, Washington, D.C.'s archbishop, is one of the electors, becoming the first African-American to earn the coveted red hat. Gregory, an outspoken civil rights advocate, has called for easing racial tensions in the U.S. following the death of George Floyd, an African-American man who died in May after a white police officer knelt on his neck. There are also one each from Rwanda and Brunei, the first cardinals to be elected from those countries. And others are from Italy, Malta, the Philippines, Chile and Mexico. The four non-electors above the age of 80 are being elevated to the rank of cardinal because of their long service. No details were immediately given about the consistory ceremony as travel restrictions are still in place due to COVID-19. With the latest appointments, Pope Francis will have selected 128 prelates during his tenure, accounting for nearly 57 percent of all electors. Watchers say it increases the possibility the next poll will be someone who continues Francis' legacy. Young Eun, Arirang News.
Good morning. After a taste of a bit of winter-like weather conditions we had on the weekend, we can expect readings to be around normal for this time of year. Then another band of chilly weather will move in at the end of the week, so be aware of great temperature swings. Dry air is filtering across the country. In fact, eastern parts of Gangwon-do province are now under a dry weather advisory. So be extra careful with anything that can start a fire. Not to mention, mountainous regions in Gangwon-do province are packed with hikers enjoying beautiful autumn foliage. Checking on today's highs now, we'll have 20 degrees Celsius here in the capital. Daejeon will also be at 20 degrees. Busan will be at 21 degrees. Decent air quality will feature, although central western regions could see dust levels rising at night. Well, November is right around the corner, and we are looking at a huge temperature drop early next week. Lows in Seoul could go down to as low as just 2 degrees Celsius next Tuesday. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the weather conditions around the world. That's a wrap for us at the hour on Arirang News. We'll be back with more of the day's headlines at noon Korea time, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching and goodbye. very well to COVID-19 virus and to the digital transformation. I think the Korean Peninsula soon will be one of the most exciting places in the world to invest. Arirang. Oh, oh, oh.